Hey guys, so you want to know how to install the PFSense software router? It's easier than you might think. Join me. I'll demonstrate it on this Topton 12th gen router mini PC I use in my home lab. It's a pretty awesome but affordable device. If you want to know more about it, check out the links in the corner of this video or find it in the description. As I've said, it's super easy. You will only need a small USB flash drive, like one gig will suffice. Okay, so step by step. Head to pfsense.org webpage, hit the download link, choose architecture. If you have a non-NetGate generic device like me, select AMD 64-bit. Choose installer, DVD is outdated today, so choose USB memstick. Console VGA and pick a mirror closest to you. As I'm in Europe, I'll select Frankfurt, Germany and hit download. Wait for it to finish and burn the image to your flash drive with an imaging software of your choice. I'm used to the Balena Etcher, but you can use whatever you like, like Rufus or Raspberry Pi Imager. So I'll choose flash from a file and navigate to downloaded image. I don't even need to uncompress this file, it will handle it for me. Choose the device to flash to. I've got only one option, the connected flash drive and hit flash. Wait for it to finish and after that eject the drive from your computer and insert it into your desired future router. Power it on and hit a key that lets you choose the boot device or opens the BIOS. It could be different keys for different manufacturers of your computer, but usually it's one of these keys. Delete F2, F10, F11 or F12. So read the documentation on your device or try the different keys a few times like me. When you get to the boot options, choose the USB drive and wait for it to start. The first thing you will see is this welcome menu. Auto boot will continue to the first option, one will to boot user. That's completely fine and desirable. So wait a few seconds or hit one. Or if you want to explore more options on your own, hit the spacebar to pause the auto start. The installation process starts shortly. You will see all this text output as it is booting. Just give it some time. Okay, the first thing you'll need to do is to accept this copyright statement. And now choose what you want to do. Install PFSense, of course. How would you like to partition your disk? I would strongly suggest sticking to the first auto ZFS option. Here are some options to it. If you're not familiar with what you're doing here, just hit install and don't bother yourself with it. Again, if you're not trying to build some kind of RAID for multiple disk drives, just hit Stripe, no redundancy. Select the disk drive by pressing spacebar to select this device with the asterisk and then hit OK with Enter. You're now warned that the installation process will destroy everything on the drive. If you want to proceed, we should be fine with that. OK. The installation process is swift and you should be presented with this reboot button in seconds or moments. Do it. The device will reboot and launch the PFSense for the first time. That was quite quick, wasn't it? OK, so this was the easy part, but don't get scared. Uh, it's not going to be that bad from now on. So now you should see the console and the first launch wizard that will ask you a few questions to do the very basic setup of your device. Okay, from this point further, you should have some idea how your network is set up and where in your network architecture fits this new router. I'll demonstrate this to you in my very basic use case. So what I want to achieve is this. I'll draw you a simple schematics of my network. Here's the internet connection from my ISP. It's connected to the VAN port of my different router, which I'm actually using right now before connecting the new one with PFSense. The LAN port of this router is connected to my switch, a device that all the other devices are connected to, like my PC, servers, Wi-Fi access points, everything. This router also serves as DHCP server in my network. The DHCP server is the guy that assigns IP addresses to all the devices on the network. I won't make it any more complicated than this. No VLANs or virtual LANs, nothing. Just this basic configuration for now. If you know what you're doing, you can set it up the way you want right from the beginning. For me and the rest of you, I just want to check out the PFSense for the first time without actually disrupting my network. So I configured it to act just like a standard local LAN device to explore it a bit more. Okay, let's head to the first config. Should VLANs be set up now? No. Enter the one interface name. This is the interface that should face your internet connection. I won't be using it right now, but let's say it should be the first one. The numbering starts from zero. So in my case, it's the IGC zero interface. Enter the LAN interface name. This is the local area network, AKA the interface going inside your network. Let's say it should be right next to it, IGC one. And the rest of the interfaces I won't use right now. I don't need them for this basic use case. Proceed, yes, and wait a while. And this is the way it looks when the PFSense is up and running. Don't worry, you won't have to configure everything 
from this console, PFSense has a very nice web interface. We just need to be able to access it. To do so, we must set the correct IP address for this device. How? Easy. Look. It says that the LAN is set to 192.168.11.24 network. That's wrong for my network. I use different ranges. So let's change that. Enter option number two, set interface IP address. As I've said before, I want for now to set it up only as a local device sitting in my internal network so I can access its web interface. So I want to configure the LAN interface, option two again. I could let it take an IP address from my DHCP, but I want to avoid looking for it after that, figuring out which IP address it got from my DHCP, so I'll configure a static one for it. So DHCP, no, and enter the static IP manually. For my network, it will be 10.0.0.140, as I know that this one is free and not taken by another device on the network. My DHCP server is configured to serve IP addresses from the range 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.99. The subnet bit count will be 24, and for LAN, just hit enter. I don't need IPv6 now, so again, enter. And do I want to enable DHCP? No. I've got DHCP running on my router right now. This would mess things up. Do I want to use HTTP as a web config protocol? No. Okay, this should be enough for the configuration. You can see we can now access the web interface on this URL, HTTPS colon slash slash 10.0.0.140. So connect the Ethernet cable to the second LAN port on this device. Hop on to my main computer and open this address. It doesn't have the proper SSL certificate, so go through this warning page. And here we have the PFSense login page. This is starting to look like something. Okay, the default login is admin and the password is PFSense in lowercase. The first time you launch it, you will see a quick start wizard like this. Go next. If you're enterprise grade, you can learn more about NetGate support. Next. Okay, this is more of a value for us general information. Set host name to something sensible, like what this device is going to do for you, like firewall, I'll put in router. Domain. Again, something intelligent. Don't end it with a uh, local like me. It says right beneath that it's not a good idea. I noticed that one later on. I don't need DNS servers right now, but if you do want to set them right now, you can. Next. Pick your time zone. Next. Configure when interface. That's the interface that faces the internet, not your local network. Don't need to configure that one either, as I'm just fiddling around for now. I'm not connecting it right now as the router in my network. Nothing needs to be changed here. Next. Configure LAN interface. It's already configured. We did this in the command line interface. Next. And set admin password. Next. And reload. Congratulations, PFSense is now configured. And we can now finally have a look around this web UI to see what's what. You can see the nice welcome dashboard. System information, name, the user logged in, version, temperature, CPU is idling, memory usage. Let's quickly skim through the menus and see all the things you can do with this thing. Here are some system configs like advanced certificates, general setup, routing, interfaces. These are the two we have configured, WAN and LAN firewall configurations, services, very useful things here. Auto backups, uh, DHCP configs, DNS resolver and forwarder, NTP, you name it. VPNs, supported protocols are IPsec, L2TP and OpenVPN. You should be fine with these with all major VPN providers. Status, again, almost anything you can think of. And diagnostics, again, everything you can think of. That should be enough for the lightning fast quick tour over the PFSense. Now let's put this baby to real work in my network. We need to set the WAN and LAN interfaces correctly. And in my case, enable the DHCP server on it so all my devices can get their IP addresses from this router. It's easy. I'll switch to the CLI of this PFSense box and make the changes locally, not over my network. Pick option number two, set interface IP address. Two, LAN interface. No, I don't want to set up the LAN interface via DHCP. We want it to be static, of course. So for my network, I'm used to 10.0.0.138, but you can change this to whatever network you use in your environment. Something like uh, 192.168.11 might also be fully viable. The subnet bit counts is 24 for me, and if you're a beginner or just learning, I'll bet for you it will be two. Okay, for LAN, just press enter, and we don't need IPv6 right now, no. 
enable the HCP. Yes, we want PFSense to serve IP addresses to our network. In my case, I serve from the pool starting with 1 to 99. Everything else I reserve for my static uh, addresses. 99 devices in one household should be plenty enough anyway. And I don't want to use pure HTTP for my web configurator. No. Okay, that's all for the LAN interface. I don't need to configure the LAN interface as it's already set to the HCP and that's correct for my network. So I'll hold or power off the system and after that I'll switch it with my main router. If everything's configured correctly, I should be back in a moment up and running. Okay, here we go. PFSense is running on the desired IP address 10.0.0.138. The network icon in the bottom right corner indicates that things could be all in order, but let's double check it. Trademarks window again, odd, but whatever. You can see interfaces are reported to be up and running. That's a good sign. I wanted to show you here that my internet connection didn't work right off the bat, but it was some kind of mishap on my network. It didn't work for a few minutes, but after that, everything went online without me doing anything. So if you encounter something like that, don't panic. It can take some time for your network to heal. Everything seems to work fine after a few minutes. And just like that, you can easily install PFSense with some basic configuration. In the following video, I'll show you how you can connect PFSense with Pi-hole to create a network-wide or household-wide ad blocking solution so no advertisement is bothering you, your family, or basically all the devices you use in your network. And we're just getting started. There's so much you can achieve with PFSense. Hope you guys like this video. If so, please hit that subscribe button. It would help me a lot. Thank you and bye.